Hello students, uh, my name is Alok and you are watching a special series on David J. Griffith on YouTube channel of Pravega Education. So in last uh, video, I explained you about the Cartesian coordinate system and also about the fundamentals of a unit vector. So now, uh, this time, I want to discuss the cylindrical coordinates. So this is... Uh, This is a figure of cylindrical coordinate. So if I uh, just tell you, if suppose this is the coordinate system, x, y, and z. So if you take a point P here, okay? So you remember that this was z. <clears throat> and two perpendiculars on this. In last class, I told you, this is y, and this one is x. So this is the Cartesian, and now we have to transform this into a cylindrical coordinate system. So for cylindrical coordinate system, this is x, this is y, this is z, the three orthogonal axes. And you take a point P, again you drop a perpendicular here, and then you will have uh, two perpendiculars like this. Suppose I draw this and this. These are the two perpendiculars. Okay. So this will become x and this will become y. So if this is point P, then this will be z, the height. And this we call in cylindrical coordinate as rho. And the angle with x axis is phi. So please remember that your x, y, z will translate into rho, phi, and z. So see again, what is rho? Rho is when you drop a perpendicular on x, y plane, then you connect it with the origin, then the angle made with respect to x axis is your phi. And this distance, which is on xy plane, so please remember this rho is on xy plane. So if you translate this plane here, so this will be your rho, okay? This rho is again in the xy plane, okay? Parallel to this. And uh, I told you about the unit vectors. What is i cap? Increasing direction of x. What is j cap increasing direction of y what is k cap increasing direction of z so similarly here you have rho phi z so rho cap will be increasing direction of rho phi cap will be increasing direction of phi so this is phi angle so if i draw uh, suppose just i remove this so that it is not confusing and draw a perpendicular on this. Perpendicular on this row vector will be phi cap and z cap is very easy. This is z cap, it is increasing direction of z. So just take these vectors here, you will get row cap, phi cap and z cap. This is the same notation like uh, ax, sometimes written as i cap, sometimes written as x cap. All these three are same. Now, we can calculate the values and this was our original. Uh, this is rho and this can be r. This will be r of spherical polar coordinate. So if I want to show you spherical polar right here, this is r, this will, will become theta, r theta and the same is phi. All three you understood? And I told you that in Cartesian, x, x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0, planes intersect, which is called origin. Similarly, if a point P is there, it is represented by three mutually perpendicular planes. x is equal to constant, y is equal to constant, z is equal to constant. Now, in this case, what are those three planes? So, this is a wonderful figure to explain that. 
just see this. If this is point P, this phi, phi cap will be, if you put a door like plane, that will be actually phi is equal to constant. So you see this, this door is phi is equal to constant. Because on this door, every vector will have phi is equal to constant. Phi is the angle with the x-axis. And this point P is represented by rho. So rho is equal to constant will be a cylindrical surface. So if you take rho constant and make a surface out of it at constant rho, it will become a cylindrical surface. So phi is equal to constant, rho is equal to constant and z is equal to constant will be a plane parallel to xy plane. z is equal to constant will be a plane parallel to xy plane. So all these three mutually perpendicular planes will make your uh, x is equal to con phi is equal to constant, rho is equal to constant and z is equal to constant planes will intersect what is known as point P. Okay, so same concept which I gave you in Cartesian came here in the cylindrical coordinate. So this is this is wonderful figure I have taken from a book Hayat. Now to explain you the small elements. So just check this. So this was point P and at that point P I am taking a small volume. So suppose this was my rho and this was my phi. So if I increase little angle, this small angle will become d phi and angle is equal to arc upon radius. So arc is rho d phi. This will become arc and parallel length translated here this will become rho d phi. This is in the direction z, so it will become dz. And this one is rho, so little increment in rho direction will be d rho, so this will become d rho. So now this cube, this cuboid actually, is like this. If you want to calculate a small area element outside, because it will be used so much, so you see, length into breadth, rho d phi dz will become this shaded area. Correct? And if you want to write a small volume, length into breadth into height, so rho d phi dz is this area and d rho. So rho d phi dz d rho will become this d tau, small volume, small volume, small area. And any other area can be just calculated by length into breadth. For example, if you want this area, it is 0 into, what is this? Rho d phi. So this area will become rho d phi d, uh, d rho. This area at the top. And any other area you can easily calculate by length into breadth. So this is again a wonderful figure to understand about a small element because you know in calculus every time you will apply calculus you will take a small element then you will take a small charge or small current element anything so you will require a small volume so this is how a small volume and a small area can be written and also if you want to translate this into your cartesian coordinate it is so easy to see it because you just see this figure. Check this figure. So this was my uh, suppose x. Just again I will drop a perpendicular like this. This was my x, this is my y, this is my rho. So it is so easy to write x is equal to rho cos phi y is equal to rho sin phi and z is equal to z. 
So this is the transformation into x comma y comma z. And if you want to write unit vectors, I have told you the general method of the derivative. Using that, you can make this uh, table. It will be very, very helpful while going into one coordinate system to another coordinate system. So here it is Cartesian, x cap, y cap, z cap, or i cap, j cap, k cap, and here rho cap, phi cap, and z cap. So if you take dot product of this, you will get cos phi. So any vector you want to represent in the form of other vector, suppose you want to write unit vector x cap, I will show you. Suppose you want to write unit vector x cap in the form of rho phi z, so it will become cos phi rho cap minus sin phi phi cap and uh, y cap will be sin phi rho cap plus cos phi phi cap and z cap is equal to z cap because it is in cylindrical also. At the same time, suppose I want to write rho cap is equal to, I will go like this, it will become cos phi x cap plus sin phi y cap. So this will become rho phi. Similarly, you can write phi cap and you can write z cap. So phi cap will be minus sin phi x cap plus cos phi y cap. Okay. So try to calculate it using the fundamental of uh, unit vector and by taking the derivative that will be very very uh, interesting to you and uh, just try to make this table by yourself by using the transformation that I have told you here. So in next video I will discuss about the spherical polar coordinate system and uh, just Try to see each and every video and give constructive comments. Thank you so much. Subscribe our channel so that you can get regular notification to the videos. Thank you.